Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and good morning. It's a very early start for me today. I'm at a hotel just by London's Heathrow Airport and today I'm going to be answering a question that uh, none of you have asked me. I'm going to be flying Emirates on the A380 in first class all the way to Dubai and we're going to find out is first class really still worth it during the pandemic. Come with me, enjoy the video and it's going to be a great one. I'm a little bit nervous too. So here we are, uh, Terminal 2 at Heathrow, and it's such a cold day, um, I'm kind of glad to have my mask on, providing a little bit of extra warmth for me today. Anyway, Emirates here at Terminal 2, they would normally operate out of Terminal 3, which is where their main lounge is, um, but because of the pandemic, uh, Terminal 3 is currently closed. Emirates now flying to Terminal 2 at Heathrow. Before we start, a quick note about my airfare. I'd paid originally for business class on this ticket and then purchased a cheap £350 upgrade to first class. This mostly only gives you the right to sit in first class and other services which normally come with a proper full fare first class ticket don't apply. Lounge access, chauffeur drive service eligibility, baggage allowance, priority check-in, baggage priority and your Skywoods miles earned will remain as per the originally purchased business class ticket. Emirates were using the Lufthansa lounge as their business class offering, which I've been to many times. I mean, the Lufthansa lounge is nice and everything, but I'm going to use my priority pass to get myself into the Plaza Premium lounge here, which is far better. The Plaza Premium lounge has nothing to do with Emirates, and I'm mostly here to show you that it's one of the best lounges available on priority pass. You can also pay your way in too, with entry starting from £25 for an hour. There's a decent buffet which even comes with a small menu of hot items which can be cooked to order. Nice. Overall, this is a great lounge, even if it doesn't have any windows. And while I was here, I noted that the aircraft to operate my flight was over 40 minutes late, being stuck somewhere over West Germany, when it should have been starting its approach here. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas, but Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash wingingit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. It was so weird looking at that departures board. Uh, you would have noticed on there the flight to the Isle of Man. Uh, now actually that's only a couple of hundred miles away from us here in London. It's a Crown dependency, so it's almost British. It's not quite a part of the UK, but you still can't travel there because of the restrictions in force on the Isle of Man, which has the ability to control who comes in and out of its borders. So you can't go there just a couple of hundred miles away and that's perfectly explicable, but you can go to Dubai. So. Rest assured, this is a massive privilege. Dubai is on the travel corridor list for England, as uh, set by the British government. At least that's correct at the time of recording. Who knows what will change uh, and what will be the situation when this video comes out. I'll put a little explainer at the bottom uh, here in case that's changed. 
But yes, terrific pleasure and a privilege to go to Dubai. I know that most of you who are watching this can't even think about travel for the next few months at least, perhaps not even until the summer. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna have a great experience and hopefully you will enjoy coming along with me too. So the aircraft landed uh, about 40 minutes late on its inbound flight from Dubai. Uh, and then there's been some other kind of delay with the cleaning staff getting on board. So I've got myself a coffee, doing a few laps of the terminal here at the B gates at Terminal 2. And yeah, I've got a very strange feeling about this flight. Normally I work very far in advance. I book my tickets seven, eight, nine, ten months in advance, sometimes a year. And I look forward to the flights for months and months and months. I actually bought this ticket only six days ago. Our aircraft today is an Airbus A380. Emirates accounts for over half the world's A380s, having a staggering 117 examples. Our aircraft dates from 2018. A380s use special gates here at Heathrow because they require three air bridges, including one dedicated to passengers on the upper deck. So here we go, flight Emirates 8 to Dubai, about six and a half hours of first class luxury coming our way. I cannot wait. Thank you, welcome back with us. Thank you. Hi there. How are you today? I'm good, how are you? This one here, yeah? Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Is, is this one your preference? This one's good for me. Alright, because we are here in a galley, so... No, this is good for me. A bit noisy, it will be fine, honestly. If you want, you can choose, yeah? Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, you familiar with the Swiss and everything? No, I'm not. This is my first time. Alright, then I'll be quickly introduce you to six. Cool. Yeah? Emirates crew come from nearly 150 different countries, and the crew on this flight was excellent. I actually insisted on sitting in the back seats because I wanted to be able to include the engines in the footage. You'll notice the crew are wearing thin white paper coveralls over their uniforms. This is all part of Emirates' anti-COVID measures, but I rather suspect it's more about providing a visual cue that the airline is taking things seriously rather than providing any safety benefit to anyone. But who knows, maybe I'm a cynic. If you need anything else, yep. we are here and we're gonna bring it for you. Okay, excellent, uh, thank you. May I offer you something to drink or something? Uh, do you have a champagne, please? Certainly, I'll yes, Thanks a lot. That looks good, thank you very much, Enjoy. thanks. Cheers. Oh. It's been a while since I've done that. We're just busy coordinating with the air traffic control and uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated once I have any further information. Okay, so as we just pushed back there, um, all of the lights went out in the cabin and there was a complete silence. Apparently the APU, the auxiliary power unit, has failed um, on this aircraft and we're going back on stand. So <laughs> let's see what happens.
well apparently whatever problem there was um, seems to be fixed the engines I can just hear starting now it looks like we're finally on our way to Dubai London to Dubai is 3,929 miles, and it'll take us about 6 hours and 15 minutes to fly today. The airline has Wi-Fi available on board, and the prices were pretty reasonable. $15.99 is quite good for a whole flight of this length. It worked well, and there's even a handy coverage map as well as an online menu particular to the flight. This Emirates first class seat is well over 10 years old now, but still manages to impress. The closing door is probably the most obvious feature with the seat, and it really does provide quite a lot of privacy. The doors close all the way and are full height too. There's a ton of storage like this deep bin by the window, which should take everything you'd need to stow, and more. The table is large and sturdy and comes with a ridge, meaning things shouldn't slide off easily. You can move your seat towards or away from the table electronically, although that's the least of its settings. The level of choice when it comes to customised seat functions on Emirates is mesmerising. My personal favourite seat gimmick is the mini bar though, which is actually really cool, although there's no alcohol in here. Now we're on to the gimmicks, there's a vanity mirror, which is very OTT. And if you want something really unnecessary, in a little drawer below the TV is a writing kit, whose sole purpose it seems to me is to be removed and kept as a souvenir. I like the Emirates supplies hygiene kits on this flight. Now, you're not supposed to wear the same mask for too long, and there are two spares here. Plus, there's sanitizing gel and gloves if hygiene really bothers you. I'm sure we've all seen an Emirates First Class review before. This was my first time actually flying the airline. And to be honest, I like the suite a lot more than I thought I would. The decor in real life isn't as overpowering as I expected. Thank you. 
As we reach our cruising altitude, it's time to think about the food on board. I'll let the menus play out so you can read them by using the pause function. Right, so here we go, there are definitely worse places to be at 35,000 feet. Got the doors closed, masks still on though. Um, it is only 19 minutes past 11 uh, local time in London, which means that really I, I should be having my lunch. Um, I've just asked uh, the person, and it is possible to have two hot meals on this flight, two lunches, even though this is um, scheduled uh, only to have breakfast and a lunch slash dinner service due to the time it was supposed to depart at 9, 10 a.m. Um, but I think in the interests of reviewing this product fairly, I'm going to be getting a breakfast. So I've ordered some stuff for breakfast. It's not normally what I would have at uh, this time in the morning, but it should be quite interesting. Breakfast is usually quite an underwhelming meal in business and first class, and I'm really interested to see um, what Emirates make of the breakfast service here on board, especially during the pandemic. Um, so far, so good. I can't really see uh, any reduction in service standards. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Got my Dom Perignon. Now I am not a champagne expert, but this stuff is fantastic. It is like manna from heaven. Breakfast isn't a meal where an airline can really show off, but I really enjoyed what I had. Everything was beautifully presented, and the spinach and goat cheese omelette was delicious. As you'd expect, there's enough entertainment on board to keep you occupied for weeks, and these noise-cancelling headphones were excellent. The TV screen is an impressive 32 inches. There's so much to see and do with the suite, it's kind of easy to be overstimulated. But in case you want a change of scenery, you're welcome to visit the shower, which is for first class only, and you can book a slot with the purser upon boarding. Okay, so here we are inside the massive shower suite here on the Emirates A380. This is available only for first class passengers. It is absolutely enormous. The lavatory, by the way, is under here. Just here, we've got a hairdryer. Don't think I'm going to be needing it with this hairdo. Uh, amenity kit, sick bag. I really hope we don't need that in the next 20 minutes. Blue paper, a hanger for your shirt or jacket, towel. A toiletry selection which I'll be taking with me into the shower. Really beautiful mirror and sink here. And this is the shower which will unlock. It's actually pretty big in there. And one of the reasons it's so big is this handle and seat here are where you'll sit if you're in the shower and the seat belt sign comes on. Um, it's probably been also installed here for accessibility, but this handle and bench are where I've been told to sit in case the seatbelt sign comes on. Also worth knowing is you have 20 minutes in the shower suite in total, and there is five minutes of water time, which you can just see here on this rather funky looking gauge. And that is the shower suite on board the Emirates A380. Unbelievable that you can take a shower at 41,000 feet. Okay, so let's see what the water pressure is like on this Emirates A380 shower. Let's go, I'm a bit nervous. Well, hey, 
it's not bad. My bed had been made up for my return from the shower. There are PJs, but I was only sleeping for an hour and I kept them pristine as another souvenir instead. As you can see, the bed is pretty roomy in flat mode. Dinner was elegant and the food was of great quality. If I had one small comment about Emirates food, it's that while it was all very good, there wasn't really a single dish that blew me away or exceeded expectations. I flew business class on the way home from this trip and I don't see a huge difference between the food services, but that might just be me. We're now on the home stretch to Dubai. Dubai in the next few minutes. Uh, Weather-wise, it's a lovely evening. It's a very pleasant 21 degrees Celsius with uh, light wind blowing. Local time in Dubai is uh, 21 minutes past 8 p.m. Uh, we, subject to air traffic control into Dubai, will be estimating touchdown at the latest at 10 past nine. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for flying your friends today. The in-flight entertainment concludes with a lavish advert for Dubai and a quick survey. For now, let's enjoy the approach into the airport. Overall, a very worthwhile experience and definitely worth the £350 upgrade as a one-off treat. Emirates' high service standards clearly hadn't dropped during the pandemic and I couldn't see any cutbacks in quality excused by the current situation. You might think this is the end of the experience and the end of the video, but let me just show you the chauffeur setup here in Dubai. Well, that's the most efficient arrival I've ever had at a big airport. Uh, bags are just coming out on the belt as soon as I was through passports. Now to see if I can find my chauffeur. There's basically a big chauffeur terminal as you leave. Present your ID or boarding card, get a small ticket with your pre-booked destination and you'll be escorted to a vehicle. That's probably a good place to leave things until next time. Don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.